Hey everybody, we're going to do a lesson for the characteristics of linear and quadratic functions. These are two functions that we're quite familiar with as far as um, previous information in this course and previous courses, uh, but we're going to use our familiar um, characteristics that we have to add to those characteristics and also to show you some other concepts such as in behavior, even in odd or neither uh, type of functions, uh, continuity as well will all get discussed in this lesson. So first we're just going to go ahead and uh, revisit our linear function and the linear parent function is y equals x. Um, from what you guys remember this uh, y equals mx plus b was the standard form of a linear equation and um, a lot of times we would think about it in terms of y equals mx plus b. m was our slope that was our rise over run. b was our y-intercept where the line crosses the y-axis and then the x and the y values that's the different coordinates for all the different points the infinite number of points on that linear function remember linear is a line so if I just want to pick some uh, points here to, to make my graph I'm gonna pick some points on either side of the origin uh, so I'm gonna put kind of zero zero right smack in the middle of this thing and if I plug in 0 for x, what will I get back for y? Well, I get the exact same thing. That's the thing with this linear parent function. What I plug in, I'm actually getting right back out. So uh, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, uh, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And now I've got some points um, that are on both positive and negative. So just going and filling this out, what I plug in is what I'm getting back out for each of my points. So um, I'll just go ahead and, and make this graph starting with negative 3, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5, 5. And again, these are only some of the infinite number of points that are on this graph but you can see that the parent function goes right through the origin, that the slope is 1 over 1, so ri rise 1 or up 1 and right 1, and that continues to be the case throughout the entire function. All right, so when we talk about domain, that means we're looking to the furthest left and the furthest right points in order to figure out what the uh, lowest and highest x values that are possible. Well, these arrows here and here indicate to us that there is no boundaries here. It's going to continue to increase and decrease in, in those directions. So because of that, we say that there, that the boundaries, because we, we never actually get to the boundaries, we say that this, the x values go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Again, that sideways 8 means infinity. So because we don't know where this thing ends and where this thing begins, then we talk about it's way beyond what we can count. So infinity represents that idea. All right, our range is our y values. We're looking up and down. And again, these arrows tell me that I'm going to continue to go down and I'm going to continue to go up in the two opposite directions here. So the range will actually be the same thing. Again, because of these arrows, we're thinking in terms of infinity beyond where we can count. So my range goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, asymptotes. Uh, asymptotes is kind of an electric fence or imaginary boundary that will keep our graph from crossing a certain line. Um, what a, t a lot of times what you'll see if there's an asymptote present in a graph, that you'll see a graph approach a, a part of the coordinate plane and then turn and go back another direction or... Uh, fail to cross that line uh, because we don't have that here we just have this line continuing in two different directions and without bounds we're gonna say that there are no or none for the asymptotes right now we'll have some functions during this unit um, that does that do have asymptotes but as of right now we do not have any of those imaginary lines that we just don't cross with our function the x-intercepts where the graph crosses the x-axis, and it crosses right there at the origin, 0, 0. And the y-intercept also at the same point, 0, 0. 
Um, that's not normal that the X intercept and the Y intercept are in the same place, but because it's the parent function and it does go through the origin where the X and the Y axis do meet, they are the same. Um, there doesn't seem to be a top and it doesn't seem to be a bottom uh, for this function. That does, so there's not a maximum or a minimum for this graph. So there's no top and there's no bottom. Uh, when we talk about end behavior, we're talking about what this graph is doing way, way, way out toward infinity. So way outside of what we can see, way outside of what we can count, what's the graph continuing to do? So this is an, an idea of like trends. So where is it trending? And as I go toward negative infinity, which would be the way to the bottom left of your screen, and it continues to go down, 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 it's continuing to move toward negative infinity. Um, remember, when we talk about um, in behavior, when we're when we're going to the left or we're going to the right is what we're looking at in the graph. When you're you're talking about x value, so as I move to the left on my x axis, what's my function doing? So what are the y values trending toward as I move to the left on the x axis? And if you look at this, as you move to the left on the x axis, this graph arrow is pointing down, 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 down. So as the x's go this way, the y values are going down. So we would say as x goes to negative infinity, the y's are going to negative infinity. They're going down. And as x is going to positive infinity, and positive infinity is to the right. So as x goes to the right, these y values are going up. And they continue to go up, and you can see this arrow meaning that it's never going to stop. So the y values are also headed to positive infinity. That's what we mean by end behavior is how is this thing behaving out toward infinity, way out past what we can see. All right, our next um, idea that we have to get in place is this idea of even, odd, or neither. So we have a couple of tests that we can uh, run through here. And the tests are simply, is it even? And if it's even, that means that it is symmetrical about the y-axis. Okay, so that means kind of like a parabola where I can draw this vertical line of the y-axis right through the middle of my graph and my graph is a mirror image on either side of the y-axis. And when you look at this line, you could see that it is not a mirror image on either side of the y-axis. Um, as I look left and as I look right, that's not going to be the same thing on either side. They're not mirror images of each other. So this is not an even function. But then my odd test is symmetrical about the origin, meaning it can be flipped diagonally over that zero, zero. So if I go bottom left, then it's the mirror image top right. Or if I'm bottom right, it's the mirror image top left. And that I do have happening here in this function. You can see that this graph, if you flip it diagonally over the origin, you would land on the other side of the graph. So this would be considered an odd function. And again, we tested it using this odd test. If it does not work for either one of these tests, so it's not symmetrical about the y-axis and it's not symmetrical about the origin, then we have to just say, well, then it's neither. And uh, most of your functions will be neither, especially as they move away from the origin and the y-axis. But we can always check these parent functions for odd or even functions just to see as they are located close to the y-axis and the origin. Our last test uh, is to check for continuity. Continuity means it's defined everywhere, meaning for whatever any x value that I plug in, there's a y value that exists for it. Um, so will it continue to 
reach all x values possible all the way from negative infinity up to positive infinity and we said our domain goes from negative infinity to positive infinity and our range goes from negative infinity up to positive infinity so we look on our graph and we say okay when i drew this graph did i ever have to lift my pencil did i ever have to lift my pen when i was drawing this are there any gaps are there any holes are there any breaks in this graph if there were breaks or gaps or holes in this graph that would mean that there will be a place on this graph that is undefined and if there are places that are undefined on your graph then you would say that it's discontinuous but since in this linear graph that when I drew the line I did not ever have to lift my pencil there are no gaps holes breaks then we would say that it is continuous I had to pause your screen and write down these definitions uh, onto your notes please do so now uh, for the different vocabulary words that we talked about in the previous uh, section with uh, the linear parent function again these are new characteristics with our functions that we want to be able to identify that we introduced today One more time just to try to drive home the points uh, about our new characteristics with our functions I want to talk about those characteristics um, that we have to the right of the page here with our quadratic function. So again, a function that we're familiar with, uh, but I wanted to kind of use it to talk about some of these new characteristics of functions. I've already got our parent function graph for you. Again, the parent function is y equals x squared. These are five of the infinite number of points that you could use for your parent function, but this is where the graph is going to be right here around the origin. Um, and so right away, we're going to jump right into uh, the domain and the range. Again, for domain, you look as far left to the, as far right as you can go. But these arrows indicate that this function is going to continue on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, so as it does that, continue to go up and to the left and up and to the right, that means that there are no boundaries for my x values that I could plug in. There does not seem to be a place that I can't use x values. So my x values are from negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, we, we say that because we want to talk about this idea that there, there doesn't seem to be any x values that I can't put into the function. All right, so the range. Well, the range is a little bit different this time because I'm not using all the y values from negative infinity up to positive infinity. If you'll notice here, the minimum or the vertex of this graph is at 0, 0. I do not have any y values below that point. So 0 would be my smallest y value. But then these arrows indicate that I'm going to continue to go up, 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 up forever. So that's up toward positive infinity. All right, now we talked about an asymptote being an imaginary line that keeps the uh, graph from crossing it. It gets really close, but it doesn't actually cross it. And in this picture, you might think that the x-axis is that such of a line. But since I actually touch the x-axis right there at the origin, that kind of throws out the idea that this entire line is an asymptote because an asymptote is a line that I don't actually touch. So even though this is close to what... A graph would look like that does have an asymptote. It's not because I actually do touch that line that I, that's there at the bottom, but I never cross it. So this is another case where we don't have an asymptote. All right, we do have an x-intercept. It's uh, touching the x-axis at 0, 0. And we have a y-intercept where I touch the x-axis at 0, 0, or sorry, the y-axis at the origin 0, 0 as well. Um, again, the parent functions typically do have that in common. Um, is there a minimum or a maximum? Absolutely. Our vertex in this case is at the bottom of the graph. There is no, there is no um, points below that vertex. So in this case, it's a minimum. In behavior, how is this thing acting as x gets toward negative infinity and x gets toward positive infinity? So way out to the left, past your screen, what's this graph doing? Well, it's continuing to go up and to the left. So that means it's approaching as x heads toward negative infinity, the y's are heading toward positive infinity. And as x is heading toward positive infinity, that's way out to the right, that's this direction here, what are the y values in? Well, they're going up and to the right, so y would be approaching positive infinity. All right, is this an even, odd, or neither function? Well, right away, hopefully you can notice that it's an even function. 
because it is symmetrical about the y-axis. That's our test for even. Can I flip it over the y-axis and it land right on the other side? And absolutely, you get that mirror image on either side of the y-axis. So this is an even function. Did I ever have to lift my pencil? I did not, so it's continuous. So that is the characteristics for our parent function y equals x squared.